Hello and welcome to Joy News Interactive on a rather sad day. The morning after we are hit with the sad news of the death of MP for Ayawaso West Wagon constituency, Emmanuel Tremanting Echako. The show is live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. We are coming to you from our digital address GA0992539 in Kokomemle, Accra. Our social media handle for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. And I am Selinam Ampo. Let's start with the bad news of the passing of the Member of Parliament for Ayawasu West Wagon constituency, Emmanuel Tremanting Ejako. He was a regular on the AM show and social media users have been reacting, really reacting to this. Let's take some tweets from Twitter and we have... Um, First, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, our very own vice president, who says, I have learned with grief and shock the sudden death of Honorable Emmanuel Tremanting Ejako, MP for Ayawaso West Uwagong constituency, popularly known as Edaho Plain. Hmm. Edaho Plain, sorry. And we have Felix Kwachi Ofosu, who says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12, R.I.P. Tremanting Ejako. And we have Kwame Yebua who says, rest well, Honorable Ejako. Um, your Tuesday mornings on Joy News will always be remembered. And from romantic Vandal City, who says, Honorable Dr. Emmanuel Tremartin Ejako, rest in perfect peace till we meet again in our Father's bosom. Ebony, who says, Ejako was an amazing man. I remember how he'd always walk up to us after lectures to talk about his campaign, not to mention the free pure water and pen. God bless his soul, R.I.P. It's a sad crying emoji right there from Ebony. Jay Zamani, who tweets a jacko in death bash Mio. I recall the first time I met him during my Legon days. That was 2012 election. Such a calm and collected guy. Hashtag R.I.P. And we have... FOKN NPP gal who says I would have voted for him if that was my constituency. He greeted all my family members. He used to come for most of the programs on campus. Oh, Ijako, the crying emoji. Hmm. We also have Alfred who says Ijako is dead with some crying emojis and he says Legon's favorite MP. Sad, 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 sad. Alfred, with that comment, and Atabinor, who says, Atabinor, who says, Honorable Emmanuel Ijako was a good man. If you were a student, especially a student leader on the University of Ghana campus, you would have met a gentle, humble, and a smart man. He didn't care about your party colors. A student is a student. R.I.P. Sir. Now, let's take some Facebook comments. And on Facebook, keep your comments coming on all our social media platforms. We'll do well to read them. And on Facebook, we have Zimbi Atabra who says, The dust has finally settled. Indeed, everything is in this world is temporal, including the world itself. Rest in peace, Honorable Boache Ejako. From Zimbi Atabra, Jerry Tete says, R.I.P. The entire family is going through trying times. Let's remind them. Let's rem remind them in prayers. That's from Jerry Tete. Oh, I'm deeply saddened by the death of this fine and noble honourable. May his soul rest in peace. That's a comment from Prosper to me. And Jeff Banta says, my utmost concern now is the gargantuan amount of money that will go into organizing a state burial for him. What they spend on him, there is nothing. 
Jeff Bansa with that comment. Merit Manuel Nyakun says, RIP, honorable man. My condolences to the new patriotic party and the family. Um, we have Savior Chagli who says, may his soul rest in perfect peace. But does this mean that the politician, politicians don't trust the hospital they claim they built? That's from Savior Chagli. And I can invite Joseph who says, sorry, too bad. I've been following this man anytime he is on TV. I admired him. Great loss to the MPP. Great loss, Mother Ghana. R.I.P. Honorable. And Kofi A. Simpson says, Adieu, my brother. Pass people off. K.O. Methodist Primary School. Kumasi will forever remember you. Kofi Simpson with that comment. Mabrook Abubakari Short says, R.I.P. Great man. May you find eternal peace with your maker. Now let's speak to Francis Niboy, who is a former student, who was a former student leader of the University of Ghana. He worked closely with the late MP. Um, hello, Ni. Nee. Hello, Ni. Nee, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You're managing. You're managing. Um, so, Ni, nee, let, let me get down to this question. How did you hear of the news? All right. So yesterday night I was in class. After class, um, I realized my phone had a lot of messages on it because friends knew how close I was to him. So I saw a lot of messages and I realized that Honor was no more. Hmm. And, and how did you feel when you heard the, mes the messages from your friends? Oh, it was shocking. It was shocking because Honor was not the type who will let you even know he's not too warm. He was full of life was full of life and he was cheerful he blended with both the young and the old he was just a different breed you know the last time i met him i think i was i was around jolly gold coast he came gave me a hug my son how are you, how are you? and we took a picture and he walked away I, I i i don't i don't have the right words to describe it but we just give thanks to god mm. What's, what, what, what's your fondest yeah. memory of exactly. Honorable Ejakun? What's your fondest memory of him? My fondest memory? You know, when he was the first, I was openly against him. I was for the other candidates. But this is a man who you are against. He sees you everywhere. He calls you my son. He comes to hug you. Basically, his, his style of politics was different. You know, Honorable Jacko didn't believe in the us and them kind of politics. He saw everybody as one. He was he was a humanitarian. He had feelings in a different level. And for us from Como to the Vandal City, we took him as one of us. And anytime we entered the hall, you know our songs, we, we held him. So he wasn't partisan. I mean, if you followed him closely and look at the kind of uh, uh, testimonies people are giving about him. He wasn't the partisan type, and he 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 had an accommodating heart. And so, my fondest memory was basically, you know, he shed some water on campus. We were making fun of the water. He told us, "Me, water is life. Water is life." And so, anytime I see him, I call him, "Hold up!" And the whole play, and he tell me, "Water is life." Or he would tell me, "The big I mean. Yeah. He was a good man. He was a good man. Uh, how... He's not a type you can hate. Ni, mm -hmm. how, how did he contribute to student politics, especially on the University of Ghana campus? Okay, so like I said, he was not a normal politician. Honorable Jaku is a type you call in the morning, in the afternoon, at dawn, he'll be available. And one thing he did that really, really surprised me. You know, when the University of Ghana tried building the toll booth, we petitioned parliament. Instead of, instead of us submitting to the minister then, Honorable Jaku called us in the morning that we should come and meet him in parliament. So 
So all of us went to meet him. He called the, the minister then that my sons are ready. Mm -hmm. Come for the petition. Indeed, he presented a petition on our behalf. And I was moved because, I mean, that's the, that's the highest form of affection a member of parliament or a representative of the people can go to show he feels what the people feel. He is not the bossy type. Honorable Yaku will come on campus in the morning. I don't, whatever the, the reason is, he'll be there. And for me, I, I think it will be difficult to replace him. I know we have good men out there, but his type of where he has one person is, is just different. Mm, mm. Me, I, I, I know that um, Honorable Jacqueline was a very candid man in respect to politics Plain, in Ghana. I will tell you. All right. <laughs> Aside that, what other lessons can we learn from him as a country? What other lessons can we learn from him? There's a lot. There's a lot. As a young man, I mean, he taught me he taught me the values of humanity. Then the politician out there should look at the Honorable Jack model. Mm. The Honorable Jack model is that there's nothing like us and them. In fact, when you are against him, that's when he gets closer to you. Mm. It was never abusive. And so for me, I think if we can make any progress in this country as far as our leadership is concerned, representing people is concerned and politics is concerned, the Honorable Jack model is something we have to use because he was not divisive. Never. He was non-discriminatory, and he had he had an open arm for everybody. He was a good man. I mean, that's all I can say. He was a good man. And may he rest in peace. Uh, so, before you take leave of us, um, what is the student body or your organisation uh, doing to commemorate him? I mean, I, I think you should send your cameras to come out hall right now. <laughs> the boys are sad they brought their drums out and they are singing and chanting for him this is a man who when the boys are singing he would jump in sing with him i mean the last time we were at a wedding of one of our colleagues he sat with us sang with us and i mean the boys are, are down the whole campus the mood on campus is down i went to campus to read this morning i couldn't even read i had to come back home mm. because he felt the mood on campus young and old alike and it's just sad. It's just sad. I mean, it's just sad. I mean, so that's a video of a wedding we attended. And if I see him in the background singing with the boys, that's the kind of person Honorable Jacko was. Mm. That's the kind of person Honorable Jacko was. Okay. Ni, we thank you very much for your call. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, we'll take a break shortly and we'll be right back. Oh, yes, yes that's uh, <laughs> Well, ordinarily, but the things that are happening with Nabu and everybody. Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Joy News Interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Um, now, to another issue. Usually, when there's a visiting dignitary, pupils are made to line up on street to welcome him or her, usually with a small flag. This act has been met with mixed reactions lately by some Ghanaians. And the latest that has gotten on social media and got people talking so much is the president's visit, planned visit to a sojaman where schools are being asked to release some students to meet the president. The latest information we have is that it has been cancelled and the children won't be made to stand in the sun to meet the president. But the question is, should students still be made to line up on the streets to welcome dignitaries? Well, Facebook has some comments for us, and we'll take some comments. And Owura Frimpon says, 
Do you know education does not only take place in classrooms? Do you also know the physiological effect the student gains lining up to see the president? Mm, I'm eager to know the physiological effects. And Gideon Safu says John Mahama did it. And Akufuado is repeating. It even started from the days of Kwame Nkrumah. Hmm. Gideon Safo, blessing, bless, blessing, says, I remember how I was, how as pupils of Kabori School Complex, we lined up to wave Jerry Rollins, who did not come at the expected time, so we didn't see him. My point is, I think this idea is an archaic one and must be stopped. The heat from the sun is enough to cause damage to the skin. Spare these kids, G-E-S. Bless, blessing with that comment. If Ifya Yeb says, nothing wrong with it, I think. Nothing wrong with it from Ifya Yeb. Joel Draman Yanumi says, the president is not popular anymore. He's aware he will not get people to welcome him even in his region. That is why he's forcing pupils to stand by roadsides just to wave at him. If he could, like he would, he would force all Ghanaians to worship him. 2020, we can't wait for your arrival. Joel Juman, Jam, Jamong Yanumi with that comment. And Sweetbet Akromon says, can you tell those in the private schools to do this? This is what happens when everything is free. They can tell you to do anything they like and you can't complain because it is free. Hmm. Interesting comment from Sweet Bert Akramond. And we have Jonathan Kakraba who says, what is new about this? We spent the whole day, those days, waiting for the PNDC chairman singing Arise Ghana Youth for Your Country. Nobody complained then. Jonathan, interesting comment. And we also have Jonathan again, Jonathan Hazel this time. Where are the NAPCO and foot soldiers? Interesting question. Where are the NAPCO and foot soldiers? Gina West says this is child abuse with some laughing emojis. And Selom Komla Anku says no, 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 and no. No to the children standing outside. Musa Rahim Bazi comes with there is nothing wrong with that. It's the patriotism we are inculcating and nurturing in the pupils, and it's an avenue for motivating them to learn. That's comments coming from Musa. Joe Eddy comes with, I don't see anything wrong with it, though. It's not like they would line up every morning to wave the press. We, sh we used to do this even when new Reverend Fathers was coming to our village, and it didn't hurt anyone. Rather, it was fun. So I don't see anything wrong. Joe Eddy with that comment kojo yankee says totally wrong what is the moral justification for that kojo yankee uh, the ges who ordered such should be likely suspended as to as to the example of the akamba and jdm leadership by example politics should be regulated by our conscience this is a comment from emmanuel amenyo what a waste of time and resources. Where is health and safety in this country? The GNAT, TUC, etc. must kick against this colonial mentality. What on earth will GES continue to support such a practice? This is what happens when you appoint a political person to run GES. Some of our students are underperforming academically and you take them out of the classroom to line up by the roadside to welcome dignitaries. Comments goes on and on and on. And this is from CC Kole. Now let's do some Thursday trends. And Twitter has been trending with a lot of Thursday thoughts. And let's read some of those tweets. We have Wendy J who says, hashtag Thursday thoughts. Before you assume, learn the facts. Before you judge, understand why. Before you hurt someone, feel. Before you speak, think. Thursday thoughts from Jill. And imagine being fooled by negativity, motivated by hate. That's waste, wasted energy. Free your soul, that burden was never meant for you. A free spirit's flame burns blue. Hashtag Thursday thoughts, that's tweets from blank. 
and we also have Zuleka Abdi who says people need to learn to accept that even the best of people can go wrong and let others down it's just if it's just and if and how they try to repair their mistake that matters hashtag first big thoughts we also have extra extraterrestrial being who says all this hassle just so our kids don't eat breakfast lunch and dinner in one meal hashtag thursday thoughts and tim fago comes with never turn down your ambition because someone is uncomfortable with the volume this is a quote from jubert botha and hashtag thursday thoughts how come 60 seconds equals one minute and 60 minutes equals one hour, but 60 hours doesn't equal one day? Huh? Hashtag Thursday thought that's from Ken Kim. Interesting one. And we have be pleasant until 10 o'clock in the morning and the rest of the day will take care of itself. Hashtag Thursday, Thursday thoughts from Imani Ima. And we have Karabo Mogoko, who says someone somewhere is fighting to survive. Hashtag Thursday thoughts. It comes with an image which says, no matter how good or bad you think life is, wake up each day and be thankful for life. Okay, before I run out of the studio, um, let me give you the video of the day. <laughs> That's all for today on Join News Interactive. Join me next time. My name is Selinam Ampo.